Welcome back to the broadcast Trans Orbit Report Radio. And it is Thursday night. It is 11.30 p.m. Central Time, 12.30 midnight Eastern Time, 9.30 p.m. Pacific, and 1.30 in the afternoon here for me in J- Japan. So uh, it is that time of the week, and we are visited by our old friend James Evan Pilato, foodworldorder.com as well as mediamonarchy.com, holyhexes.com, newworldnextweek.com, and cyberspacewar.com. Let's not forget that one. So at Media Monarchy, it's great to have you on the broadcast. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Welcome to the Twitterverse. Hey, and are you there? Okay, there you are. I'm here. I was uh, saying, uh, yes. welcome to the Twitterverse, James. We'll we'll have Thank to figure so it all much. out there. <laughs> and yes, I think from sometimes... at Orbit Report to at Media Monarchy Twitter, finally. Uh, I don't know. I, well, anyway, absolutely, yes. So uh, I am part of the Twitterverse right now, and I, I actually personally don't really care because I've <laughs> never thought that I could put much into 140 characters, but I know that's the way a lot of people communicate these days, so hopefully we can reach out into the Matrix and grab more people out of it. And on that note, we have a ton of Food World Order stuff to go through, as always. But before we do that, perhaps we should just mention what Brock in Australia was mentioning there before the break. The latest edition of uh, the Media Monarchy podcast oh, yeah. just dropped last Friday. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to have relaunched kind of after a hiatus and doing the show actually from here, right as, as I sit doing this with you right now, doing the live show at home through another through an internet station through Revere Radio, and it's fantastic to be able to kind of shift and to be able to do it from home. And I have kind of big things and and I'm big things planned, and I'm really excited. So I I hope folks will go check out the latest podcast. James, you had to rub it in with the weather at the beginning of the show. It's, what is it, wetter than usual here in the Pacific Northwest, and I'm in Portland, Oregon, and it's it's been raining for days straight now, and I think there are days more ahead of us. So I'm glad you're enjoying it. We have to wait a a little bit longer here. But the, a, a note on Twitter and just some of the, Technologies is talking about the drones with Brock and and a huge thanks to him. It just kind of struck me. We do really, we absorb a lot quickly and just kind of roll with it and move on. Kind of as you were saying, you know, if you would have talked about this, you know, a year or two ago, it would have seemed really fringe, but now it's here. We've absorbed it. It's part of the normal and we just kind of go on in a way. And that's kind of fascinating and scary. There are literally videos up on YouTube from just two or three years ago of the secret police testing of drone technologies and things that they, they wouldn't let the uh, the media go see, but they snuck in and, and filmed oh, yeah. the launch and all of this kind of stuff, which in and of itself may have been a type of PR trick for the uh, the introduction of this technology. But again, I mean, it was such an amazing thing to see police starting to use uh, drone devices. And now, and now they're being used in all sorts of everyday applications, as we'll be getting into later in tonight's episode, improbably uh-huh. enough. But let's uh, let's start from the top. Starting from the top, and again, they're so very much on foodworldorder.com. Oh, and I'll, I'll mention, of course, don't forget, hashtag foodworldorder. <laughs> Crackdown on feeding the homeless goes nationwide, and I grabbed this from Brass Check TV. All over the country, major cities are banning the feeding of homeless people. The excuses they use to ban the feeding of the poor range from assessing the nutritional content of donated food to beautifying downtown areas and neighborhoods. In New York, media mogul magnate Mayor Bloomberg is worried about the sodium content. Really? No salt or no food. And the Economic Collapse blog expands on this story, and there is a clip to go along with that. And again, I always try and provide all kinds of extra links for you to check everything out. Some of the main cities where this is going down, like Philadelphia, which when I saw Mayor Nutter of Philadelphia, I was like, ah, that name's familiar because he's imposed curfews as his city has gone wild over the last couple of years. Orlando, a group of activists last June arrested by the police for feeding the homeless in defiance of a city ordinance. In Houston, a group of Christians was recently banned from distributing food to the homeless with links to... Houston Chronicle, and also in Texas at Dallas, adopted a law which greatly restricts the ability of individuals and ministries to feed the homeless. Again, from the Houston Chronicle. Las Vegas, New York City, and on and on, James, criminalizing giving away food under the guise of, oh, we really care about our street people, and we don't want you to poison them with high, salty foods. 
I would tie this into the the, the economic collapse generally, because I think really, I mean, what we're being prepared for is the utter dehumanization of the poor, the in those in debt, and the homeless. And we've seen like the literal dehumanization of homeless people as so something of a meme lately. And uh, we saw it South by Southwest, the uh, the homeless oh, yeah. Wi-Fi hotspots where they were paying people for Wi-Fi access, and it was literally literally homeless people who were just walking around providing Wi-Fi access as if they were literally nothing more than an object to be used. And I think this is just part of the general dehumanization of, uh, of the poor that uh, the general public is being conditioned for now because, uh, unfortunately, more and more people will be finding their way into the ranks of the, the poor, the downtrodden, and the homeless if the, uh, the economic collapse continues. So... Uh, is really worrying to me from that perspective. And of course, just the idea that cities can ban people from giving food to the homeless is an affront to just the most basic principles mm -hmm. of liberty and uh, quite disgusting. The, uh, it reminds me of the, the memes also kind of floating around. And I think we talked about just a couple of weeks ago, the new film and book series that everybody's talking about, the biggest movie in the world, Hunger Games, that again, that kind of implants this idea of, of this programming that you're talking about. You also, on the top of the show, James, you touched on the doomsday virus, I believe. A researcher now claims doomsday virus not as lethal as feared. And I grab an article from PlanetSave.com. In the continuing controversy over the 2011 experiments with a mutant strain of H5N1, making it airborne and potentially contagious to humans, lead virus researcher of growing notoriety, Ron Fuchier, or Fuchier, told an audience of microbiologists that he didn't believe that either type of the wild avian flu virus or his lab's strain of the flu were as lethal as others had supposed. And furthermore, we've discussed this before, and, I, and I've had several postings in the past related to this story. As a result of these and other reports, as, as it got a lot of coverage, this research by the aforementioned growing notoriety Fauchier Research was selected for review by the National Science Advisory Board for Biosecurity, which they recommended the papers be delayed and, and redacted. And then there were cries of censorship. And then this past February, a special panel as part of the World Health Organization, while agreeing that the publication should be delayed, which the major journals involved, Science and Nature, had already complied with, determined the WHO determined that the paper should be released in full and unredacted. I can't help but always just keep thinking of the anthrax attacks of now 10 plus years ago, of the things that, that are done in labs, James, that then later we go, oh, whoops, I, I don't know how that happened. It certainly does provide the convenient excuse, doesn't it? Well, actually, earlier I was talking about H1N1. You know, oh. Point, not, not the doomsday, but uh, but yes, it's good to keep our eyes on this okay. and uh, see where it's going because, again, it's always a vector for another type of false flag, and it's always that ace up the sleeve so i'm confusing my my confusing <laughs> your hns my hns a couple related notes james one from naturalnews.com neurosurgeon issues a public challenge to vaccine zealots inject yourselves with all those shots you say that kids should get and we also have monsanto pushing amazing science to kids in the form of a book called look closer at biotechnology and it looks like a science workbook for kids and of course it was brought to you with folks like monsanto and dow and syngenta and bas and dupont and this is just another way of you know kind of the destruction of kids institutionally in schools while they're getting their you know fifteen thousand plus hours of compulsory programming I also have an interesting post, James, on vintage weight loss ads, a look at the health advice of yesteryear, kind of riding on the coattails of everybody chattering about the the season premiere of the show, Mad Men, which, I, on a sidebar note, I've kind of been fascinated that things like Mad Men and The Walking Dead and Hunger Games are all put out by the same studio, and they seem to be kind of part of the dominant kind of cultural memes. But kind of riding on the coattails of the Mad Men show the other night, some of these old soda ads and other kind of pseudoscience and snake oil ads, such as, as you can check out and many more. For a better start in life, James, start cola earlier. How soon is too soon for you to start feeding your baby Coca-Cola? Oh, I <laughs> shudder. I shudder at the thought. Oh, my. 
Let, but, let's hope that the uh, the age that is answered is something like 82. I think that <laughs> might be a safe time to start drinking it. Um, this and many other things were posted by one of the new contributors helping me out on Food World Order, Adam, up in Canada. And he helpfully added in some links to some clips from CorbettReport.com, like the last word on snake oil and pseudoscience and eugenics never really went away. And also a little bit on Walter Lippmann and how all of this social engineering kind of really went down. Another one from NaturalNews.com, James, is I'm just knocking them down. Michigan to destroy ranch livestock based on hair color. The state of Michigan is only days away from engaging in what could be called true animal genocide. The mass murder of ranch animals based on the color of their hair, part of a shocking new invasive species order, ISO, put in place by Michigan's Department of Natural Resources, DNR, with a link to the Michigan.gov slash DNR page. This invasive species order suddenly and shockingly defines virtually all open-range pigs raised by small family farms to be illegal invasive species. And, of course, the industrial businesses are waiting to swoop in on all of it. That's, that's generally, James, whether we're, again, we're talking about food or money or entertainment. It's, you know, they, they privatize an occult and hide away the real and penalize you and give you the fake and... It continues. Uh, what a bizarre story, and I'm just reading further into it, uh, mm-hmm. that they're calling these uh, these pigs feral, feral pigs that have to be put down, and uh, I guess one of the traits is the, the actual hair color. Ridiculous. One of the, yeah, I, one of the I, I nine traits. I don't know traits. to comment on it, but just looking at this, it seems like just another attempt to uh, to take more powers and, uh, of course, demonize those those family farms, which which are all, all obviously harboring all these invasive feral pigs that are going to take over the Michigan pretty soon, I guess. Because certainly feral pigs pose a far greater danger than genetically engineered flu viruses, right? Yeah, or, you know, genetically engineered tomatoes with uh, trout genes in them and all that kind of stuff that can only be good for you. Mm-hmm. Or the uh, glow-in-the-dark sushi with the... Uh, yeah. What did they, what did they inject into it? I don't even remember. Then there was the blue strawberries. I think that had some kind of fish, you know, gene inserted into it to make the blue strawberries. I think that was on last week's Binge and Purge, James. But this week's Binge and Purge is another wild and woolly ride through the world of food, the environment, and health, and more. And I call it Pre-Chewed Taco Copter and Strange Booms. And it begins with a story on... A company I've mentioned before, and and again, while well, throw out the disclaimer, James, you know, none, of, none any of the things I mentioned are are just mentions, and I endorse none of it, nor do you or Republic or anyone else. So, having said that, Annie's Natural leaps in IPO as investors clamor for mac and cheese. Annie's is a company out of California. I've kind of noted them before as being one of the seemingly last few kind of independent organic companies but basically they went public this past week and they are backed by something called solera capital and basically everybody just made millions and millions and millions of dollars meanwhile we'll wait to see then maybe what happens to the ingredients as they always seem to go south once something like this happens interesting well as a red-blooded canadian boy i must admit uh, mac and cheese is my my comfort food so uh, <laughs> it's good to hear there's an alternative to the, uh, the giant and, monolith in that area annie's a california-based maker of packaged foods including cheddar bunnies and organic granola bars backed by solera capital that's s-o-l-e-r-a has raised $95 million through an initial public offering on the New York Stock Exchange. Solera, the U.S. mid-market private equity firm that owns a 91% stake in the business, sold its stake down to 63%, then essentially making a crap ton of money. Shares will begin trading under the ticker BNNY, as the bunny has always kind of been the mascot of Annie's. So I'm, of course... I don't even know if I'm cautiously optimistic, but we'll we'll just have to see and and see what happens to another you know company that again, on so many times like this, James, I'm like, oh, I actually learned about this from my girlfriend, but it's it's worth noting that when Paul Newman died, 
all the ingredients went south on all the Newman's kind of line. Everything then all of a sudden got, you know, natural flavors. And, and, and again, you know, they, they could be much, 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 much worse. But you could just instantly see, you know, the, the quality go down. Because once, you know, you're doing it for your investors, it's all about the bottom line. James, there are other bits on here. What you did discuss at the top of the show, U.S. suspends food aid to North Korea over missile plans. My link goes to VOA News. New study says disorientation from pesticides, a clue to bee disorder, and that is from USA Today. And we've also got the Supreme Court throwing out the human gene patents. The Supreme Court on Monday threw out a lower court ruling allowing human genes to be patented, a topic of enormous interest to cancer researchers, patients, and drug makers. The court overturned patents belonging to Myriad Genetics Incorporated of Salt Lake City on two genes linked to increased risk of breast and ovarian cancer. James, any any notes on those first few lines in the binge and purge? Well, definitely that SCOTUS decision, absolutely so important, throwing out the human gene patenting and overturning that. Um, from what I understand, it wasn't a particularly unexpected decision. A lot of people were saying that uh, it was pretty inevitable that they were going to do this, as the Supreme Court seems to be fighting back a bit on some of the human gene, uh, not just human gene, but the biotech patenting in general. But unfortunately, of course, not enough to really overturn the the fundamental underlying concept of the ability to patent life forms, which was granted in Diamond v. Chakrabarty back in 1980. So uh, for a, 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 a type of bacteria that could eat oil, and it was supposed to be used for oil slicks, to clean up oil slicks, and that uh, that patent went went ahead and the Supreme Court said it was okay. So, so that underlies the entire biotech industry and all of the monstrosities that we've been seeing coming out of it. But at least, you know, things like human genes can't be patented. I mean, can you think of the implications of that? It's just, it's extremely scary on a number of levels. Well, James, before we head off into the break, I'll make one last note and, and maybe we'll continue on it. But social media strikes again. We've been talking about it a lot lately, but it has worked quite successfully on the case of the pink slime. And on that note, we'll be right back after this break. Radio. We are here on this Thursday evening, as every Thursday evening, going over the food world order with none other than James Evan Pilato. And we are going to wrap up the binge and purge for this week. But before we do so, we have another caller on the line. We have Werner in New Brunswick. So, Werner, thanks for calling in tonight. Yeah, good evening, James. Uh, you uh, mentioned there earlier about invasive species and uh, that they want to throw the book at this uh, farmer there in Michigan. Mm hmm. And uh, but uh, how about uh, all the invasive species that have been introduced by Monsanto? Exactly, exactly. And, That's that. Uh, that was the comparison. Yeah, and then uh, another invasive species that has invaded Afghanistan has invaded Iraq and Libya, and working Absolutely. on Yemen and uh, Somalia, and you know, they call it NATO. And it continues to expand, but uh, but what is the answer to that? Unfortunately, it's not an invasive species that can be put down because it's peopled by real human beings whose minds are trapped in the matrix. I think the only thing we can do is to uh, to make people realize that they're part of that matrix and to pull themselves out of it, stop feeding that war beast. But uh, on the Monsanto note, you're exactly right. Of course, the, uh, the GMOs are the biggest affront to nature that, that's going and, right uh, now. As I say, you know, they want to throw that farmer in jail. How about those the Monsanto executives throw them in jail? I hear you. How do we get from here to there? Well, people have to go some backbone and start speaking out and not putting up with it anymore. And basically call those uh, scientific whores for hire. Call them what they are, scientific fraud, scientific whores for hire. That's exactly right. And, and you're exactly right. People have to be speaking out about this more and about these real issues that, that really underlie everything. And uh, it basically it uh, it uh, becomes a bit, become a, a question of survival uh, of uh, of the of life on this planet if they are not being reined in. 
as I often say, it's a game for all the marbles. All right, Werner, thank you so much for the call. Let's finish up, James, with just the, the last bit of Binge and Purge here. Well, and it, it, there it is again. It's Hunger Games indeed. James, tacocopter.com is a real thing. It's a drone that ideally would deliver fast food, like Brock was mentioning. And it's, it's exactly what Bill Hicks joked about now 20 years ago. With all of our military technology, why don't we use it to feed people? Because basically that didn't seem to be part of the agenda. James, all that and so much more amazing, crazy things are on foodworldorder.com. And we'll also remind you, because I think you were tweeting during the break, James. Hashtag. <laughs> I did. <laughs> hashtag food world order. <laughs> Absolutely. That's exactly right. And if for anyone who's interested, it's at Media Monarchy. And, uh, and I'm at Corbett Report. Wow, I can't believe I've become so invested in the Twitterverse <laughs> yeah. so quickly. At any rate, thank you so much for this, James. And uh, looking forward to tomorrow's episode of Media Monarchy. Yeah, live on, on Revere. I am excited. Episode 252. Thanks. Excellent. Okay, all the details there at MediaMonarchy.com. So once again, thank you for all that. And thank you to all the listeners out there. And uh, tomorrow night, of course, Friday night is going to be our regular Friday night routine of the, uh, the Corporate Report archives, going through to find some, some good uh, previous work that I've done on various topics. But next week, we have Stefan Molyneux scheduled to come up on Monday, uh, Mark Russell on Tuesday, and T. Snyder, the creator of Blindfold, a film about 9-11 coming up on Wednesday night. So another jam-packed week on Corporate Report Radio next week. So I hope you'll continue to stay tuned. And as always, you can find myself and all my work at CorbettReport.com. Be there or be square. Until tomorrow night, thank you so much for listening, and I'll talk to you again all in 23 hours.